Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2011 Korean action thriller movie called Moby Dick. This movie is set in the 90s, where the technology was not as advanced as it is now. There was a mysterious bombing on a bridge in Korea and three journalists were persistently trying to uncover that case. Apparently, it's difficult for them to find out the mastermind behind that bombing as the authorities also seem to be covering up the truth. Moreover, they also had to face many things in order to reveal it, including being threatened and kidnapped. So, who was behind the bombing actually? Did they finally manage to uncover the case? Let's find out together. On a cloudy day, a mysterious bomb suddenly explodes on a bridge located on the outskirts of Seoul. That bridge's name is Balam Bridge. The news of that bombing quickly spread all over country and everyone, including a senior journalist named Lee knows about it. He knows that it will be a trending topic for the next few weeks and he can make a good article about it. So, he immediately goes to the location to get more information about the bombing. Once he reaches Balam Bridge, he sees his police friend shooing away the reporters crowding that place. His friend's name is Detective Ma. He is so lucky that Detective Ma is there, it means that he can privately obtain some information from him before the other reporters. However, it seems like Detective Ma carelessly answers Lee's questions by saying that he doesn't know anything yet. Moreover, the only information given by him sounds bizarre as he tells Lee that North Korean spies are behind all this. Lee is so surprised by Detective Ma's explanation, but he still believes it. Arriving at his office, he meets his old friend who comes to visit him. His name is Yu. He tells Lee that he has something to say, but he seems hesitant to say it. When Lee leaves him for a while to pick up the phone, he quietly leaves the place. Lee is so confused with Yoon's behavior. Meanwhile inside the elevator, Lee meets a new reporter named Jin, who is going to start his first day working there. It turns out that Jin is also a great reporter and one of his achievements is uncovering electoral fraud. He is assigned to be Lee's partner in uncovering Balam Bridge's bombing. When Lee is about to tell his boss that he is going to write about Balam Bridge, his boss told him that she has already received a report from Jin. It is written that there were two fatalities and one injured in that explosion, and it is still too early to suspect North Korean spies. Lee is so furious realizing that Detective Ma fooled him. At night, Yoon suddenly comes to Lee's house. He tells Lee that he doesn't have a place to stay. Although he's still a bit mad with Yoon, Lee lets him spend the night at his house. On the next day, when Lee wakes up, Yoon is not there anymore. But, Yoon left his bag which turns out to contain many discs and documents. The next day, Jin is trying to find any information about the injured bombing victim at the hospital, but the hospital also seems to cover up the truth. However, he has a secret agent phone number which is written as the serial number of the money. He calls that number and obtains three names which are most likely to be the bombing victims. Meanwhile, Yoon is also at that hospital to see the condition of the victim. But, it is not explained why he is there. But, from this scene, it seems like there is something between him and the victim. On the other hand, Lee and his colleague are trying to access the discs. This woman is Guan. She is also assigned to uncover the bombing incident. However, those discs are secured with a four characters password and there are more than one million combinations of it. Not long after, Lee receives a call from Yoon, asking Lee to meet him at a cinema. When Lee arrives at the cinema, Yoon brings him to his friend's place. There, Yoon finally tells him the facts he should know. He tells him that he worked in Army Security Command, where he stole the discs and he can't go back to that place because he knows he will be killed if he does so. Lastly, he tells him that the bombing was not an incident, it's intentional. On the next day, Lee, Jin, and Guan start to work as a team and they come to Yoon again to interview him. But, he looks like he's hiding the facts. When they aren't finished, a group of gangsters suddenly come to kidnap them. Lee and Guan manage to escape, but not with Jin. He is kidnapped and about to be killed, but they decide to release him instead. Luckily after being thrown from the car, Jin manages to write down the car's plate number. On the other hand, Lee secretly takes a document from Yoon's pocket. On the other hand, Lee is investigating Yoon after they were attacked by those mysterious gangsters. He asked him once again who is behind all this. This time, Yoon tells the truth, 
he tells Lee that an organization with a black whale symbol is the one who did it all, not the Army Security Command. Knowing that, Lee also asks him who is the man on his document, but he doesn't answer. So, Lee suspects that he was the part of that organization and took part in the bombing. After being kidnapped, Jin comes back to their secret office. There, he finds out that there is a bug in their telephone. That's why the gangsters know where they are going. Moreover, the gangsters have also stolen their documents and it makes Lee very upset. But Guan tells him has already made a copy of that document and Jin also tells them that he has already written his kidnapper's car plate number. Therefore, his enthusiasm for solving the case comes back. The next day, Lee and Jin accidentally see the gangster's car and they follow it. Turns out that the car stops at a bar and Lee is sure that place is their headquarters. Lee immediately calls Guan and his photographer friend to come. They make a plan, Guan and his photographer friend will come inside as customers, and then, they will try to find any information from that place. They get in and order some drinks. Apparently, the photographer drinks too much so Guan has to do the job by herself. When Guan is going to the toilet, she hears a conversation inside a room which turns out to be the gangster's office. She waits until the gangster comes out and then she hides a voice recorder inside a trash can and immediately gets out of that room. Not long after, that gangster comes back into that room without knowing what Guan did. Guan thinks that she has already recorded many things so she wants to take back the recorder. She pretends to be a drunken girl who enters the wrong room, pretends to take a shit in that trash can, and brings that trash can with her. However, the gangster thinks that there is something wrong with her so they chase her. Luckily, Lee has already called the police before and the police come on time. But, the gangsters realize it so they release Guan and cover their hiding place by using a sliding wall. It's hard to believe that they successfully fool the police using that trick. On the next day, Lee, Jin, and Guan are instructed to face their boss. Their boss tells them that they are dismissed from the case for defrauding the police. However, someone suddenly comes up and tells Lee that the injured victim is already awake. Hearing that, Jin immediately rushes to the hospital and finds out that the victim is already dead. He then calls Lee and tells him that he just ran into a suspicious-looking person in the hallway who he believes to be the victim's killer. When Jin is going back from the hospital, a car in front of him suddenly stops and he accidentally hits that car. Soon after that, another car also hits him from his left so he can't get out of the car. Apparently, it's Detective Ma who just hit his car and he did it purposely. Suddenly, the killer that Jin saw shows up and kicks a stone that is used to support a big truck's wheel. The truck slides down the road and Jin doesn't realize it because Detective Ma distracts him. That big truck then hits Jin's car with great force and Jin is killed. It turns out that Detective Ma helps the organization to cover up their crime. On the next scene, we can see that the man behind the bombing asks the attorney general to lie in press conference that the victim died by suicide. He also tells him to tell the public that North Korea did the bombing. Meanwhile, Lee starts to check the voice recording obtained by Guan. He finds a keyboard typing sound with a four characters pattern and from the typing sound, he can conclude that the second and third characters are the same character. He is very sure that it is the password of those discs, so he immediately tells Guan about it. With that pattern, Guan thinks that she can try every possibility of the password as she only has to try 40,000 different combinations now. After a few days of trying, she can finally unlock the disc. It turns out that the discs contain the information of the bombing victims' names. The scene shifts to a flashback before the bombing. Turns out that the victims carried the bomb by using a car. However, they didn't know if they brought a bomb because they were kidnapped and they then asked to bring that car to an amusement park. They just realized that there were a bomb inside their car when their car was uncontrollable due to brake failure. Soon after that, the bomb exploded. Here, it is also explained that Yoon is actually the person who monitored the victims so they could be kidnapped. On the other hand, Guan finds a strange symbol on the printed documents and Lee remembers that symbol is also in Jin's notebook. When Lee checks Jin's notebook, he accidentally finds Jin's secret agent's number and calls that number. However, when he says his name, that person hangs up the phone. When Lee walks home, he is kidnapped by gangsters. He is then tortured by the man behind the bombing and asked to stop from investigating the bombing case. But, he manages to escape and the man lets him go. 
When he comes back to his office, Guan shows him that she finds a lot of the same numbers on the printed document. It turns out that the numbers lead them to the date of the next bombing, which is tomorrow. Meanwhile, the man behind the bombing is talking to his boss. It turns out that the man's boss is a government official who instructs him to do the bombing for the political purpose. So, the organization secretly works for the government. That's why the police and the hospital always hide the truth. On the other hand, Jin finally finds out that an explosive is going to be installed on the plane that will leave for Jiju tomorrow. However, Yoon suddenly calls him and tells him to find him at the cinema. Not long after they meet, a group of gangsters suddenly comes and they are caught. However, a lot of photographers including Lee's friend suddenly show up and start to take pictures of them catching Lee and Yoon. So, the gangsters are forced to release them. Soon after that, Yoon finally tells everything at a press conference. Meanwhile, the article about the incoming bombing is spread and as a result, a lot of people cancelled their flight. But strangely, Lee still boards that plane. However, mid-flight, the bomb's timer stops and Lee safely arrives at Jeju Island. While he's still sleeping, a mysterious man puts something on his lap and it turns out to be Jin's secret agent phone number. He calls that number as soon as he arrives in Jiju but we don't know what they are talking about. In short, Lee and his friends successfully uncovered Balam Bridge bombing. They also saved the people who were supposed to board that plane. But, how did the bomb's timer stop? Did Jin's secret agent do it? Or do you have another idea? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and see you, next time.